Yeah, good. I don't know what we're doing up an hour earlier, but you know. Oh. Victorians thinking their god can change time at whim. I know. I, uh... Come on, our curtains are far more important than yours. Do you even have the sun down there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, this morning. Absolutely, it's peeking <laughs> through. Uh, I think I was up at four o'clock this morning and it was getting light. Yeah, it's 4.30 and it was daylight bright out here and I'm like uh... <laughs> oh, I was up at, actually I was up before, before that painting finishing off those rat uh, painting them is a lot better than working with them uh, well I haven't been doing that this week, but I still work with them. <laughs> Morning, Grant. <laughs> Start your paint brushes. Very clever. Right. What did I do last week, Matty? Uh, mosquito riders oh, and right. mosquitoes and the scorpion. And the scorpion. Those were the mosquito riders with the um, the colour shift wings. Is that what you sent me? Yep. Yeah, that's excellent. <laughs> get them. Pretty crazy. You can get colour shift paints for minis now. Yeah. And good use of them, I would say. Yeah, we did the iridescent wings on the dragonflies very early on. This will be a test of where the camera is, Maddie, because boy, oh boy, did it get a flogging this week. So... Green, purple, I um, threw some vids up onto the Facebook group that show it going through its colour transition, very nice, what, what you couldn't see, what you probably still can't see that is not going to focus is there's a, a rainbow glitter paint on the body it doesn't show up just well. barely oh yeah no, i can see it yep yep you're a little bit off camera but i can see it it'll yeah. fo focus is on it it's very difficult now because the monitor's directly behind me uh. and there's the scorpion Very yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. So today I've got a druid coven. Let me try and fix this camera because it's In all manner of the wrong place. That's a bit better. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of worshipfuls. Uh, there are four. I think they're... It was hard to tell. They're sprites, but they look like they've got beards. Um... <laughs> Dwarf sprites. Yeah, and a <laughs> and a tree with crazy arms. So we'll do him first, I think. Put 
some goggles on and get going. I had a friend here last night, we were playing some Alpha Strike and they didn't finish until fairly late, so I'm a bit slow. At least you're getting a game in. Yeah, first one for a long time. Alrighty. I do like my new chair. More mercies than having to give back the old one. Well, I don't know. I didn't really have to give it back. They said I could keep it after I said they needed to come and get it. And I said, sorry, I've ordered a new one. You have to come and get it anyway. Uh, 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 uh. Actually... I didn't say you had to come and get it anywhere. What I said was, I've ordered a new one. Would you like me to dispose of this one? <laughs> so then they decided they'd come and get it. This guy's got fungus growing out of the side of his head. And down here, <laughs> and there. Does he work with me, does he? <laughs> and it's got a bird's nest with eggs in it at the top. I did reach hey. out to Q2, Clee, but he hasn't responded. So. Oh, yeah. I don't know how busy he is. Yeah. He said he was being really busy. Yeah. Um, have you got any tips for pinning straight? <laughs> pinning straight? Yeah. <laughs> uh, use flexible pins. Um... I've never managed it. Why? Oh, I'm about to pin a new hand on an old rat. Yeah. And I would like... And it's a small space, obviously. We're talking a hand on an arm here. Yeah. And I would like the thing to be straight and uh, the pins and holes to be aligned. Now, I've got some tricks for aligning pinholes, but nothing for getting the damn things straight. Use PVA glue and a lot of patience and a bigger receiving hole. Yeah, yeah what Manny says, that's about it. And a lot of patience because you got to hold the sucker there in place for... Ever. <laughs> yeah, until it actually can sit. Yeah. Hope you got steady hands. <laughs> uh, not at the moment. Is um, that too much beer or too much caffeine? Too much anger. <laughs> Thought you were painting rats, not ponies. <laughs> Yeah. I've actually got no. I've finished those. I actually have a pony sitting right here now. A standard bearer pony. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I you, you could, you know, you can attempt to stabilise it with something like blue tack while the PVA goes off. But you know, then you've got the problem of cleaning it all up. When it has gone off, you know, there's it's we're, we're, the PVA, uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're heading for compromise after compromise after compromise at this point. So, no, I might just 
um, I'll, I'll try my luck with a pin and uh, I will use green stuff. Oh, yeah. Just wanted to know if there was a, a special trick for doing no, it. No, it's, it's trial and error and patience. You know, for, for drilling things straight, you kind of need a drill press. But then to hold a miniature and a hand and stuff like that in a drill press, is that's just an exercise in futility. Yeah, no, more than likely I'll be using a, a pin. Pin voice. Yeah. These are really quite small yeah. drills I'm going to work with. I've put a pin voice in a drill press before. Needed some very fine holes. Just need the drill press. Oh. <laughs> I actually bought a drill press for the Dremel. Yes. Yep. But it doesn't work for my Dremel, Dremel. model. Oh, I, oh, I God, I hate <laughs> like, that. are you kidding me? <laughs> God, I hate that. It work. It, it. I'm like. It does work for some bits. Like you can use specific bits, but you can't use the the um, drill collet for it. Yeah. The multi size one, you know. So yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. You, all you can use is their fixed size bits. Right. Which is crap. Yep. It is, and I've run into that problem with Dremel before, because I've got two. Yep. And I bought an attachment for one, and it didn't work on that one, but it worked on the other one. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I have I have to use the extendable arm, flexi arm thing. Flexi arm thing, yeah. To get full use of the Dremel. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm stuck with just their bits. Yep. Yeah, been there. It's yep. annoying. Yep. This thing has a lot of fungus growing out of it. Uh-oh. What's going on there? Must have put it away wet. What's on your table today, Matty? Uh, I've got... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, sinuses. Uh, since those skeletons I posted up yesterday, mm -hmm. I've done a unit of barbarian sinocultists. Right. I'm just waiting for the... Um, the basing paint to dry so I can throw some rocks on it and then those are done done <laughs> and then I got a um, the other half of the sisters of blood to do cool how many demon world armies are you painting all of them. <laughs> <laughs> nearly all of them excellent <laughs> Have you got dwarves? I don't think you've got dwarves, have you? I've got a dwarf starter army coming. Right, that's right. Oh, no. I'll probably yeah. end up buying a lot of the artillery for him and say, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Of course, they've got battle max. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't get that one. 
that 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 robot thing. I just got their artillery. That's a substantial piece of kit, by the way. Yeah. Having rehabilitated one. So what, three inches or something? Oh, or is it more in the scale of a dragon? Uh, it's, there's more more lead in it than a dragon. So on the scale of the uh, spider with the house on the back. It's really? Holy big. shit. Yeah, it's pretty wow. big. Grant loves them too. Yeah, I was thinking it was more like a two, two and a half inch tall sort of thing. No, it's very, very big. Really substantial. Very heavy. Right. There you Sweet. It's all the woodwork. It's brown. Why is it my nose runs only at this time of the week? <sighs> I don't know. It's um, so doing me today it. too, actually. I've had really, really terrible hay fever for the last week and a half. I've got some new antihistamines on Tuesday. And they started working. Like the last three days have been great. Mm. But not so this morning. Not so this morning. And it's had two hours to work oh wow so you went <laughs> when you said early you meant early yeah especially for me grant's given us a sneak peek of his novella <laughs> right <laughs> I'm laughing at the image of you s twisting around in your chair, <laughs> yeah. sliding on. It's like, uh, I got you excited. And I think I annoyed a bunch of people by not making them steam powered anymore. Yeah, good enough. Well, yeah. as you pointed out, it's problematic. It's extremely yeah. problematic. Yeah, I have to do that. Morning, Rach. So, if you, if you were a self-respecting druid, what colour would your robes be?
kind of a trick question, really. I'm not sure there is such a thing as a self-respecting druid. Hmm. Did I just totally miss pressing the button? You did. Okay. Um, the boring answer is green. Of course it is. Are we going to be How about boring? brown with green mixed in? I could do fucking yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on the sort of druid. I mean, you could have um, blood red. That'd be quite fitting for <laughs> yeah. certain type of druids. Yeah, absolutely. These guys, I don't know if you can see, they're all carrying scythes or sickles. Well, then, golden sickles and white robes with red belts. I'll uh, get a fix. Yes. Did he have white robes, did he? Whitish grey, I'm pretty sure. Sold. Sold to the man with a pot of apothecary white. Hold on, this is going to take some mixing. I haven't touched it in ages, and you can see the settling layer. Okay, it's a white robe, white beard, red capes, golden sickle, black, oh, black brown belt. Red cape? A red cape. I knew he had red on him somewhere. Some reference material. Beach oh. was just admiring little fairy that you were uh, you had on the screen. Before. Oh, was she? Yep. <laughs> now the question is, where have I put them? <laughs> Welcome to Dan wandering around his house looking for his Asterix comics. Mm. Asterix and the Golden Sickle. <laughs> Have you still got Asterix comics? What do you mean, still? I had to go out of my way to get these. That's oh, really okay. interesting right. here, Matty. He's got a green belt. Did you say that? No, I said brownish black, but that's one of the really early ones, isn't it? I guess it's changed. Green belt then. <laughs> I mean, that is a story that's all about Getafix, so why the hell not? Hmm. It's got blue shoes in the one I'm looking at at the moment. Yeah, there are blue shoes here too. <laughs> <laughs> and that cape is red on the outside and purple on the inside, so... Well, that's just shading. Well, it's probably just shading. Possibly. I love my Asterix comics, because the English translators did a superb job capturing the humour. Oh, yeah. They're totally different jokes to the French. Yeah. <laughs> they work. Yeah. <laughs> Generally speaking, I'm not a great big fan of translators who take liberties with things. I prefer a more literal translation yeah, in media that I consume, but Asterix is a great big exception. Yep. I mean, having a chief called Vital Statistics just... Genius. <laughs> Even evil villain Roman, nefarious purpose. <laughs> oh, the Roman names are fantastic. So yes, white robes, none of them have got capes, so 
they're gonna miss out on the splash of red but I'm sure we'll come up with something I suppose you could paint them white on the front and red on the back yeah it's probably not your tone clothing that'd be a bit silly but you know <laughs> probably not gonna work So I'm just going to have to douse these in apothecary white, then dry brush them, and then we'll come back and do all of the other bits and pieces. Wow, I knew the golden sickle was an early one, but I didn't re remember that it was the second one. Right. You was that? My mind immediately leapt to nineteen fifty something, but I'm not sure. An old comic. According yeah. to this. Nineteen sixty two. Wow. And that print that I've got there was two thousand four. So obviously I did my Asterix comic collecting a little while ago. I mean I remember reading them as a kid. Yeah. It, it's another one of those things. It's like the the Simpsons. It operates on two completely different levels at the same time. Because as a kid, they're really good, fun, rollicking adventures. And then as an adult, you're starting to get the humour. Yeah. Mm. And the bard. Cacophonics. Cacophonics, because it's a cacophony. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'm sorry, for me, he represents every Australian Idol contestant ever. Oh, speaking of cacophonies, I discovered, because I'm always five years late, but I discovered that um, the KLF had come out of hiding. And done something. Well, starting from last year, they've... Um, released their back catalogue on streaming services. Ah, oh, right. So I don't know if you remember, but in at the end of 91, started, or was it 93? I can't remember. Yeah. They burned a million pounds and deleted their back catalogue. So you just couldn't get it. So that White Room album, you couldn't get it. I have some of their stuff on vinyl. Yeah, but the 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 anthology's all been released, so there you go. I've been cool. catching up on my Ancients of Moo Moo for the last few days. <laughs> Are they excellent? And three AM Eternal was yeah, that them? Yeah, 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 yeah. Last three AM Eternal. Last train to Trans Central. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, I got a bunch of that stuff on vinyl. Yeah. Justified and Ancient, the Tammy Winnett version. <laughs> right, so now you've got it all on whatever your streaming thing is. Yep, it's using Spotify. But now I've actually got it all stuck in my head, which, that's good and bad. But, uh... Yeah, I don't have a Spotify thing, so... 
But they were also the Time Lords. Do you remember that horrific thing called Doctoring the TARDIS? Yeah. Yeah, that was them. Right. All right. I really enjoyed, there was one reviewer that said, this thing is so execrably bad that the only place that could possibly be headed is the top of the charts. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. There was something else that uh, I was working my way through emotionally during the week was that I don't know if you guys have watched Stranger Things. Uh, I've. I... I watched like one and a bit seasons before it just got too much for me. Yeah, it's funny because Jo did exactly the same thing. She sort of gave up sort of episode three or four in season two. Yeah, it was just too stressful. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess there's possibly a little bit of spoilers in here, but... um. There's Don't an worry, episode. I'm never going to watch it. The end of season four, and I haven't watched it, but um, I have an interest in this, and I'll get to that in a minute. But at the end of season four, there's a scene where one of the primary characters is, is in danger. Surprise, surprise. Um, and the the other characters apparently, again, I haven't watched this. Loaded up her Walkman because. It's the eighties with a cassette that's got Kate Bush's running up that hill on it. Well, this is this is why that running up that hill became such a a thing that people were doing on social media. People were and doing stuff. it, yeah. And the thing's now got ah, oh, I. I might get this number completely wrong, but 140 million views on YouTube or something like that. Whereas prior to the release of that episode, it had like 5 million views or something. <laughs> and and yeah, yeah. the song went to the top of the charts in the UK. It actually reached number one. It wasn't re-released or anything like that. It's just people picked it up and started buying it again. And it set the the record for the song that's taken the longest to get to number one. Because back in the day, in 85, it got to number three at its peak and then dropped away again. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, it set a couple of records. So it was first, it was oldest artist to reach number one because she's 63 now or something and longest longest ever time taken for a song to reach number one. And I think that second one is by some considerable margin. <laughs> yeah. How interesting. And all of us that were Kate Bush fans back in the 80s are just looking at it going, this is like the Red Wedding all over again. <laughs> we told you so, people. We told you so. <sighs> it's funny, I was listening to an interview with her. Um, the interviewer was talking about how kids were going to their parents going, hey, have you heard of this person called Kate Bush? And the parents are going, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, it's, it's hilarious. Everything old shall be new again. Yeah. yeah. I was always, always very partial to the second side of that particular album. I thought the second side was her Magnus Opus. There you go. Uh, it, it brings back hilarious images of me sitting painting toy soldiers in my bedroom as a teenager. <laughs> Listening to Kate Bush. <laughs> Listening to Kate Bush. <laughs> now I am in my 50s painting toy soldiers, kind of in the living room. So, 
except it's not really the living room. It's your living room. It's my living room. It's where <laughs> I live. Where you live. That's it. <laughs> So yeah, there's been a couple of musical journeys this week. From the sublime to the ridiculous, or actually the other way around, from the ridiculous to the sublime. Hang on, I'm going to get some dwarves out of the cabinet so I can... Uh, um... Mm -mm, have them for reference when I'm painting these other ones. No worries. <sighs> You're partial to a bit of KLF, Maddie. You know, I'd never heard of them before. Really? Yep. I mean, burning all their money when I was oh, a no, 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 young no, no. child. I didn't say that. I didn't <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying that. Burning all their money and not talking about it for 20 years when I was a young child will do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the key here, the key is that it's 23 years. Yeah. And... And that expired in 2017. It did. And so they can start talking about it now. And they did a they did a flash mob thing. You know what? I'm gonna make his robes red. Fair enough. He looks like the leader one. He is the leader one. He's the guy that's waving his sickle above his head, so Well it's gotta be a golden sickle. Yeah, yeah, he's also got a a stick with a face in it. So that'd be interesting. He also hasn't primed particularly well. Hmm. The um the whole shtick of the KLF was based around the Illuminati trilogy. Uh -huh. so, if you've ever read that stuff. So instead of a pyramid with an eye, they hit a pyramid with a ghetto blaster. <laughs> and, and, you know, this is why the number 23 is. Because... The number 23 is the thing in the Illuminati, from memory. I, I read that a very, very, very long time ago. It actually, I wasn't actually taken with it, but I know a lot of people thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was a bit daft. Well, you did make a Fnord reference the other day. Absolutely. Which came out of it. Wikipedia tells me. I certainly did. Um, I think Steve Jackson did stuff in either uh, like homage or he, he might have actually done GURPS Illuminati. That I think that sounds right. So I think I would have got it from GURPS rather than the original source. What do I do with these? Yeah, you did a card game. Right. And then it became a GURP supplement. Right. Steve Jackson games. Wow, now that's taken me back to my childhood. <laughs> The fighting fantasy game books were my gateway drug to gaming. As they should be. Oh, you know, I got into those even before Choose Your Own Adventure books. <laughs> 
But that opening sequence in the first episode of um, Stranger Things, where the kids are sitting around playing D and D, that scene has a lot to answer for. It does. However, there were some good memories in there. We played Dragonlance, though. More for us. Oh, the only thing I've successfully brought back out of the 80s were aviator sunglasses <laughs> with tinted lenses. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else can pretty well stay where it is, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, yes, yes. That is the a really it's... bright green. It is a really bright green. It was deliberate. I'm hoping the deliberateness pays off. Which one is it? Striking Scorpion Green. Uh, don't have that one. It's one of the new ones. And this is the first time it's been opened. Yeah, Grant, I've seen that before. I've considered buying it several times on the uh, Nintendo Switch. What's he talking about? Uh, the computer version of the Steve Jackson Sorcery uh, Quadrilogy. Right. It's gone on sale a couple of times, but not at a low enough point where I must buy it. <laughs> Several of those old books are, have been computerized since, but with varying degrees of faithfulness. So, continuing down the nostalgia trip path, I purchased and read Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim this week. I don't know that one either. Mm. There was some childhood memories right there. My mother reading that to me. And um, it stands up well as a book to be read by an adult, which is really cool because normally... Children's books do not work. Uh, Grant's a fan too. Yeah. It's actually extremely well written. That, people, is how you mangle brushes. This isn't bloody Watership Down style, is it? Uh, no. Just making sure. It's a while since I've read that. It is an older style of writing.
So these aren't actually winged creatures. They're small people with strap-on fairy strap wings. Strap-on fairy wings, yes. Extremely well put. There really is something for everyone on this range. There is. I thought I might do these wings in an, in a color shift as well. Oh, fair enough. If you got them, use them. He says with a couple of pots of color shift paint, one of which he's used once, the other never. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I might have used oh, twice. Yeah, twice. Well, twice is more than zero. Yeah. True. I'm actually saving the one I haven't used for the dragon that I've got. <laughs> That's sitting there intimidating you into not yeah. touching it. I'm less intimidated by it now, now that I've painted some other big things, but it won't be next off the line, I can tell you that. Yep. Is that a 15 mil drag? Yeah, one of the Demon World ones. Yep, yep. With two heads. Oh, cool. Because again, two is better than one. My daughter's painting the high elf dragon. Yeah, nice. And it's there's quite a bit in it, man. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, we're in the, we've been at it for quite a while, and we are nowhere near finished. There's quite a lot of work there. Yes. Uh, I cheated. Oh, yeah, brushed the hell out of it. Yeah, April's not at that stage, so we do everything by hand. Mm hmm. All right. this guy and touch up his fungus.
Did you get that fence done, Glee? Um, well, what's your definition of done? <laughs> Uh, yeah, hand it over to somebody else for formal testing, obviously. Well, in that case, it would fail because the chickens would get out, but <laughs> well, it's not run, done, just, done. Just don't it's, run those test cases. <laughs> yeah, but in all other test cases, it certainly wouldn't fall down, so in that respect, it's done. done. <laughs> okay. And it looks good, that's done. Right. Um, I have... Just, I've cemented all the posts in and I've made all the squares and I've strung all the wire up between all the squares to make them so now I can string my guide wire. Yeah. So all I have to do now is string a guide wire and put the chicken wire on. Right. Everything else is done. All the structural stuff is done. Okay, cool. Yeah. All the star pickets are in. Everything's ready. Uh, you got a strainer? I do have a strainer. Mm. I borrowed one. I borrowed one that will do both just chain, uh, just um, single wire straining, or it's, I've got an attachment that will strain chicken wire. Or, oh, you know, nice. Wire wire, fencing yeah, yeah, wire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you'll be able to get it taut then? Yep. I won't tolerate anything less. Yeah, right. <laughs> The the fence that, that I put up to keep the dog out of the the garden bed. Yeah. Every time I look at it, I die a little bit inside because, like, it was put up with... It, it's basically a tomato steak structure with wire applied to it, and it's a bit of a dog's breakfast. Oh, yeah, no, concrete... I've got in, yeah. like, good, good corner poles. Every bend has a proper pole with... And instead of putting stays in, because I suck at doing 45 degree holes and cuts yeah. and all that stuff, yeah. I just made box sections on every yeah. single pole. Yeah, so box section with the diagonal wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's how all the fences uh, were done at Emerald. Yeah, it's just so much easier, man. And um, I'm gonna, I've got stuff I want to grow on each one of them too, you know, so okay. each one has a different... Um, Soil type, sun position, you know, different characteristics. So there's different things I can grow on each of the things. So I thought I'd put the effort in, make a nice structure that I can cool use for for various things. Yeah, pepper. Um, what else? I was going to do some, yeah, some pepper, some passion fruit. Uh, yes, yeah, passion fruit, dragon fruit, things like that. Uh, now you got me thinking about passion fruit. Haven't had it in years, haven't seen it in years. Yeah, right. I've got a really nice vine. I have no idea where it came from. Because the where I used to live in Kenmore, we'd get wild passion fruit from the cockatoos. <laughs> um, and I also got you know given a couple and bought a couple and whatever. Anyway, this one I think is what you would call a Panama red. So they go red. They don't shrink so much when they're ready. They just go red. And it's my god, the sweetest passion fruit I've ever had. Mm. It's good. The, the bush is only like about a year and a half old, and it's had a heap of passion fruit last year. That's good. I didn't think they produced fruit for a couple of years. It took them that long to get established. Yeah, no, this was really quick, man. It, it didn't. It's not like the biggest vine in the world at the moment. It's going to fill that fence line it's on, but it was just covered in fruit. And the ones early on, when it was still hot, because I need the heat to go sweet, I think. So the early on ones were just really sweet. Mm -hmm. I've got a few other ones there too now. 
Let's see how they go here. But most importantly, it'd be nice to have the chickens out of my garden. <laughs> Sick of them killing everything. Except the hawk. Except the hawk. Yeah, well, they haven't killed the hawk yet, have they? No, um, one of them got taken by a goshawk the other day. Well, you, you never know. It might have given it indigestion and killed it. <laughs> it's that time of year that the goshawk's around. Mm-hmm. Just love how easy it is to just pick these up with a, a little bit of dry brush. And so it takes that contrast just up to the next level. That's very effective. Dry brush, uh, sorry, a contrast coat and then a dry brush. Yeah. I mean, you know, if I was doing that using the traditional Games Workshop three-colour blend method, uh, that's a weekend's work. Yeah, man, I hear you. Fine. The armour on the Skaven guys I just finished had probably five layers on yeah. It. Yeah. and that was for the model I didn't care about yeah five layers Whew. did you take any notice of the stuff that happened for Golden Demon do you see any of the pictures of any of the I don't, models nah. no. I follow that one guy um Richard Gray no, uh, look, I do follow Demon Rich. Um, I, I find his stuff a little bit over the top, to be yes. honest. Um, and same with that Hadrion, Hadrion guy, whatever his is. Um, I don't know who, who his name is, but um, I, you know who I do follow and I really, really, really like, who was in the Golden Demon and hence I saw some photos. Mm hmm was Mike McVie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so, he's yeah. still going. Yep. No, he's just picked it up again, actually. He said he had a long break, mm. and he's just getting back into it. So, uh, since he left Games Workshop in, like, 99 or something, he had a break from all that stuff, and he's just getting back in and there was lots of stuff, like Darren Latham posted photos of him with McVie and one other guy, and I can't remember his name, which is very bad. But yeah, they were noting how a giant of the industry was back and judging. Yeah, yeah, nice to see him back. And because oh, I follow him on Instagram, I enjoy his stories and the models, because I remember all these models from Games Workshop. Yeah. In heavy metal, you know? Yeah. And you get the backstory of them all and things like that. You just look at them and you look at just how much time and effort's gone into, you know, single models. And it's like, wow. Yeah. And also there's the change in style over the years too, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it will never be my thing. That single model thing? Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, I bought a one of the Roll Path uh, um, Ogre giant things mm. just to give it that, that a go, give it a, a bit of a bit more time, practice skin, practice faces, because the, the skin on that Ogre model is amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for for the G Dub stuff, it's really about just army painting. Yeah. Okay. 
you picked up one of those um, Army Painter skin tone sets as well, didn't you, Clay? Yeah, yeah. I've just started using my first one on the last rats, um, the Dorado. Yeah, that one's my favourite out of the set too. Yeah, nice tone. Um, I was using the Vallejo uh, flesh base, and it's just a little bit too brown, I think. Mm. I've only got the Vallejo uh, dwarf flesh, which is almost orange. And the elf flesh, which is what I'm using for eyeballs nowadays. I do have that elf Don't flesh. Don't much care for them. No, I haven't used it. I used it once on one thing. The elf flesh. Again, it was a bit the wrong colour. However, the dead flesh colour, I use a lot. Is that sort of a greeny grey? It's a nice, yeah, it's a nice pale green canvasy colour. Mm. Works good for boats and highlighting greens and things like that. Not so much for mini for skin. Really Unless you're painting things. zombies, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I don't have any dead things yet. A Tomb King's army came up for sale the other oh, day. No Gumtree. way. Yeah. It may still be on there, man. Uh, he, I was chatting to the guy about what he wanted for the whole thing. Yeah. It's about 10% off or so, which makes it about 1200 bucks for for not more than about 60 bloody models. My gosh, Tomb King shit is expensive. Expensive. Yes, it is. And I was like, ah, oh, sorry, mate, that's not the army for me. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's all because it's unobtainable. Yeah, it had a couple of war sphinxes or something in there and yeah. some other necro sphinx thing or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, nah, man, all I want was like old hammer, vampire or undead shit. I'm not after your crazy expensive yeah. tomb kings, so to speak. So, if you're just looking for an undead experience, have a look at Mantic's Empire of Dust. Yeah, no, nah, I'm, 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 unless they're of metal, I'm not that interested. Yeah, half the Mantic stuff is metal. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you are talking. <laughs> yeah. Let's move this out of the way. Which is why I like the old hammer stuff. You know, like I tolerate some of the plastics, but I find a lot of the plastics, unless they're the really, 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 really new stuff. Yeah. So I find a lot of the mid-range plastic, mid-year plastics, quite old. Um, just rubbish. So this is one of the, I don't know what they're called, blade guard, whatever. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Um, here are plastic skeleton legs and torsos with the Empire of Dust metal, metal upper and shield. There you go. Cool. That makes them ludicrously top heavy, but who cares? Here's another one with a, you know, a small scythe. Yeah. And then you get the the plastic catapult with a metal decorator on the front to turn it into or a dusty. Yeah, right. cool. So they they are definitely they're a, a plastic metal blend army, but there's um, plenty to like about it. Yeah, man, that's wicked. This guy's, again, plastic skeleton, metal head, metal shield, and huge metal banner. Yeah. So, yeah. Just add that extra level of yeah. detail, you yeah. know? Yeah. 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 
So that's cool. That's a good way to do it, I reckon. Yeah. And skeletal rats. Are you kidding? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. So we won't tell anybody how long I've had this. <laughs> Assembled and yet to be painted. Um, I'll just put it away quietly and we'll forget about it. <laughs> are they reasonably priced? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, cool. Not too bad. Uh, from memory, I got that from um, Mighty Eight. From memory. Yeah. So the, I think the point was not go and buy a Mantic Army was you're not stuck with Tomb Kings if that's what you want. No, I was more actually after just the classic undead army. Right. But this guy, and, and the only reason I mention it is because you mentioned you, you were kicking yourself about not having a Tomb Kings army and this one had... Uh, no, I was kicking myself about the fact that I did have a Tomb King's army. And you got rid of it, yeah. I got rid of it. See, sure. if all you want is skeletons, then there's that. Is... is... Oh, that's Warlord Games stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yep. Well, there's a hundred skeletons in that box. Uh, the problem with that is, is that they're all ten pieces, so you're assembling a thousand pieces. So I did one yeah, frame no, and went, "Oh God, I've lost the will to live." Yeah, now that uh, all the Tomb Kingy one looks mm. looks like that would hit the spot, but I'm I'm not desperate for any. Undead stuff. I just keep my eyes open. I saw that one. Mm. It's the right price, and I looked at it. Went, Ooh, no, no, that is not the right price. It's no one's definition of the right price. It should have a. You know how they do those um, collectible shows? Yeah. On, on TV, they should have one called "The Price Is Wrong." <laughs> How do you like your fungus? Orange with a side of yellow? Yeah, it sounds pretty good. I spent all day working on spell definitions. How'd that go? Well, I got through about half of them, I think. I'm about into, I'm into death so. at this point, yeah. Yeah. Got a play test tomorrow. All of the spells? No, no, tomorrow is all about charging and what it does to alter the uh, usual sequence of melee.
better set an alarm for that. It's at seven. <laughs> that? I said I better set an alarm for that. It's at seven. Given my ability to spring out of bed this morning, hale and hearty. If I don't set an alarm, I'll probably just sleep through it. Yeah, right. Yeah, he comes up just before four. Yeah. Oh, I was awake. I just didn't get up. Then I went back to sleep. And then half past seven rolls around, and it's like elbow in the ribs going, don't you have a painting thing this morning? Oh, yes. Yeah, I had the sleeping thing. It didn't gel with me, so I got up and... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Been awake since like three or something. Yeah. Finish my rats onto my dwarves or back onto dwarves. Mm hmm. Be keen to paint this doom wheel, just haven't got any super glue. Road trip to Buttings. Yeah, I'll head into town in a minute, go to the market, go to the Super 8, ask the, the news agent. They got enough to sort me out. The news agent. I haven't been inside one of those for years. About the only place, or oh, it's one of the one of the few places I can get super glue in the little town near. Me. All right. They just got the regular stuff. Yeah, my choices are limited. Mm. Last time I just went eBay and bought five at the same time still working my way through that stock yeah i read somewhere that super glue has a life sh shelf, shelf life about yeah. a, a shelf life about a year or something doesn't yeah, it once you've opened it yep or oh, once you've opened it so it's okay yeah it'll store open. it'll store indefinitely before you've opened it So I've got a super glue complaint. <laughs> right. What's that? Maddie's got a super glue complaint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How come they don't make the applicator needles out of the same stuff they make the bottles out of? Hmm. <laughs> 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 it's a very good question. Sorry, that's that's my bad joke for the day. Well, you know, it's not for the day. It'll be first of many, but that's all I got on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of trouble with the, the current bottle. Um, for some, somehow, a little bit of grit got inside the, just inside the tube. And it formed a plug, because obviously there was a whole bunch of glue accreted around it, and I had to take it off and then fish the plug out. And, you know, of course, now there's contaminant all the way through it, and it just... Uh... <sighs> I got a little bit of um, 
gritty inside the bottle, not the current bottle, not the previous bottle, the one before that. Mm. And the glue went off around the grit. Yep. And then it kept going off and it was just a chain reaction. It was a half full bottle of solid gunk. Side yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? I have no idea how the hell it got in there. <laughs> either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? Oh, this Ekros Dunes has just about had it. Yeah, I finished uh, Potter Sterling Mud for these um, cultists. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I bought two at the time because I knew I'd need them. Yep. It's weird thinking about it. The only paints I've actually used to completion are texture paints for basing and um, quick shade wash medium part of that. Mm -hmm. And I've never finished anything else off. Yet. Yet. But a few... <coughs> Is it usually my mixing colours or highlighting, like bone white? Mm hmm I use it in a lot of different things. Uh, and I suppose if, you, you know, when you have to drop out a drop each time, and sometimes you only really need a... A tenth of a well, drop. A bee's kneecap. Yep. Uh, to mix into what you're doing, yeah. But not of my primary colours I use, you know, like your main colours for your, your minis, blues, greens, whatever you're doing. So mm. I've been through a Black Templar. I'm on the second one of those. And this Abaddon Black is just about done. This Ceramite White is just about done. And I might just throw that out on principle because it's I've rehabilitated it three times and it's getting to the point where there's grit. Like it it's the the paint particles are no longer free floating, they're clumping, which makes it very difficult to use. And in fact, the reason Citadel stopped selling Ceramite White was because it was a crap paint. So so they replaced it? No, they've never replaced it. So now your your options are Corax. So let me uh -huh. let me show you this. So this is an unmixed Corax. <laughs> you see the separation in that. Right. So these are the two whites. Oh, yep. What's the one on the left? This is the ceramite. That's the Corax. Uh, yep. So Corax is the only one you can get at the moment, which is actually a very light grey. Yep. yep. So what I got to replace the ceramite was... I get this. Oh, yeah, I've only got apothecary white. Yeah, so this is... The Vallejo Cold White. And you can see oh, yep. that it is even slightly whiter than the Ceramite. But the, yep. the, the knowledge of the interwebs says that this Cold White has a really good pigment in it and is, is excellent for exactly what I'm using the Ceramite for, which is to, um, when you've got a colour that's gone over an area, to go back over it with a white so that you can use a contrast again. Mm. 
uh, anyhow, um, I'm going to use a little bit of Praxetti to dry brush these guys to um, pick out the highlights on the robes. Because you look at them right now, they're really grey. So they're not yep. in white robes, yep. they're in grey robes. So. Yeah. We'll, um, try and brush the Fenord out of them. I certainly do on the track, is not Yeah, so now if I grab another guy who's the same who hasn't had that treatment, see one's in white, one's in grey. Yeah. And that's that's the secret to um, apothecary white. If you if you really do want a white figure, you have to dry brush. Or I mean, you can spend the time to to do the layering if you really want to, but the whole idea is it's supposed to be doing it quickly. So this isn't a dry, dry brush either. And you can probably tell that it's not dry, dry. But you get the sort of compound effect between the the contrast paint and the the, the dry brush. Give them a bit more depth. This would work just as well over the speed paint, I would have thought. You know, this the, the dry paint is not going to reactivate the speed paint. And a whole unit of stormtroopers like this. Well, it would be effective. It was. Um, painted an entire force of stormtroopers in a weekend. And you set yourself these stupid little challenges from time to time. I painted an entire two millimeter army in a day. Two millimeter? Mm-hmm. <laughs> modern was it modern modern Soviet, I think. And it was just <laughs> spray green. <laughs> Brown wash. <laughs> <laughs> I think it took longer to base them than it took to paint them. But um, when it was done, it was actually quite effective. I'm going to... Um say goodbye i'm gonna get another coffee and get to the market and go and get my super glue and things you're talking about getting on with the rest of your day yeah don't know that i could advise that but <laughs> i feel like i've been halfway through my day <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it um have a damn good one, Glee. 
Yeah, and we'll catch up soon. For sure. Yeah, have a good one, Manny. Yeah, you too. Take care. See ya. So even doing a two-stage like this, it's still faster, I think, than painting it in the sort of, quote, conventional, unquote, manner. Undoubtedly. just for the sheer speed in which the contrast paint will go on. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a look at the the way that that's picked up the highlight edges and you get that nice, you know, gradient going into the fonts yeah. and stuff like that. It, it's, it's very, very effective. It's murder on the brush though but that's why you use dry brush brushes. Hmm. Don't have any of those uh, dedicated ones. These, of all of the products that Citadel produce, their brushes are generally the worst. But these ones that are marked dry, boy, oh boy, do they take some abuse. Yeah, I had heard that they were pretty good. Yeah. The, the stuff that you, you're trying to get a point out of, forget it. They're garbage. But these things, very, very good. I've got four of them within easy reach. Um, why four, you ask? Well, if you've just Different washed... Different sizes. No, they're all relatively the same size. There is one there that's quite a bit smaller. But when you've just done what I've just done there, and you've washed one out... You can't immediately dry brush a different color on it because the entire bristle set is wet and there's water up in the ferrule. Yeah. So you've got to go. You need a dry brush. Dry. Dry. Yes, exactly right. You can't you can't dry brush with a wet brush. It just doesn't work. You end up with smear brushing. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> You're telling me this now after a year and how many... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I imagine smear brushing could be a, a technique for something. I should probably just be using the one brush that I use for dry brushing for stippling now. <laughs> Be very effective at stippling, yeah, but that's about it. Yeah. So, you know, how you said to me during the week, Have you painted some infinity? Mm. And I said, No, and you said, Change is as good as a holiday. Well, so I get to the stage of assembling them and priming them, but I haven't touched them since. Well, you know, that's all right, too. Assembling something different. It's all part of the hobby. There, might, there may or may not have been some swearing about that. Some of those were not easy to assemble. Still, they look all right now. I'll get to them. Maybe today I've got spells to do. And army lists that were together for tomorrow morning. You got a uh, playtest, have you? Yeah. Mm. You're welcome to come along and listen to if you really want to. It will be at 7 a.m. my time, though. Well, uh, the sun keeps rising earlier and earlier. And... Damn summer. Well, as Clee mentioned, it was up at, you know, four o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. And I had a really poor night's sleep. Like, 
really poor for me. Hmm. It was um, took me quite a while to drift off, and then when I did, I dreamt about spiders. Oof. Yeah. Oh boy. And so I woke up in a sweat out of that. Mm-hmm. And it took me another hour to get back to sleep. And I dreamt about sharks for some reason. Yeah, and after the sharks, I just decided, you know what? Check the phone, see what time it is. Mm. Oh, look, it's 4.30. Yeah, I think I'll get up now. So I got up... So I got up for about three minutes and then I went back to bed until six. Right. Well, just before six, but yeah. Is this your subconscious's way of telling you to move to New Zealand? I think they've got spiders and sharks. I don't don't think they've got the spiders that Australia's got. Hmm. True. I think everywhere has spiders. I think they're just ubiquitous, but... Like cockroaches. Mm-hmm. I like how um, cockroaches are so good at survival that if you cut their heads off, they starve to death. So cutting their heads off doesn't kill them. It's the fact that they can no longer get nutrients into their body. <laughs> Gives you an idea about how mm. successful they are at survival. Oh, you absolute idiot. Just on New Zealand, though, I would never move there. It's too cold, too right. far south. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, but I agree, it's... Well, depending on where you are. Uh, yeah, the back streets of Auckland aren't much to write home about, but... Back streets of any capital are not much to write home about. Mm. Oh, Canberra. <laughs> not that there's much to do, though. Well, that's where all the pawn shops are. Yeah, and all the weed. And the fireworks. Did it again. One flick too many. It's very cheerful red. It is. It's like a Santa Claus red. So I guess Coke can, right? Maybe he is Santa Claus. Santa with a sickle. I'm sure there are some versions of St. Nicholas that have got one. Hmm. They'd be St. Sickleus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll admit that's pretty good. I want to know. Dad joke warning. I want to know. You've got a sickle in each hand. Is it a bicycle? Yes. As it is when you snap one and run down the local hardware to get another. Mm hmm. I think I'm going to have to spend some time this afternoon reading some asterisks. Why the hell not? Oh. I could be doing a lot worse things with my time. All right. Probably need to do flesh on them all. What's the time, Matty? It is um, 38 past the hour, the second hour. Right. So 22 minutes. Uh, yeah, I guess so. so we Can't do reverse math. <laughs> well, 
What, what's reverse math subtraction? <laughs> Can't even think of the word. It's, it's, it's when you it's 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 when you reverse math the subtraction that things start to get really hairy. Double negatives. And how long before it all becomes irrational? You know, how do you multiply two negative numbers anyway? That's silly. Mm. Well, the banks clearly get it wrong because my interest rate keeps going up. Well, the UN has got plans for that. Oh, really? Yep. They put out a statement the other day saying that instead of instead of reserve banks jamming up interest rates to slow down inflation, they should just demand everyone set price to the same thing. Oh, that's going to work. Fixed price economy for everything. That's going to work. Well, it's the United Nations. They're uh, trying to end the world as we know it. So <laughs> clearly, <that> clearly. <laughs> yes, guys, the system is flawed, but it is flawed in a predictable way. Stop it with your unpredictability. Yeah, I wish I was joking about that, but no, it was a serious statement that they put out. Oh boy, oh boy. Next up, you're telling us that communism works. They've been saying that for years and years and years. Mm. Anyone who hasn't actually lived under it. If Venezuela was so great, why the hell are they fleeing in the millions? Yes. <clears throat> I like the story. You know, if you're looking for stories that are, what do you call them? Warning stories? Um, Precautionary tales. Precautionary tales. That's brilliant. That's exactly what I was looking for. If you're looking for precautionary tales, look no further than Che Guevara. Please. I invite you I invite <laughs> you to examine that man's life in some detail because Because if you did you wouldn't be wearing his fucking face on your t shirt, you yeah. dopey muppet. Correct, correct. There, there's, it's one of my bugbears, too. There's, there's the first one, okay? The man was a homicidal, psychopathic murderer at the end of his life, and and that's not something to celebrate. Um, <clears throat> and this is even more disappointing by the fact that the guy was a surgeon, qualified. So he was a medical man. Hmm. He, he was, he, you know, there, was, there were oaths and... and you know, intentions in his early life to do the right thing by people and to, you know, make a positive mark. Let's. But he saw the depredations of capitalism on his world because of the influence of America on South America and all that kind of stuff, and so he'd made up his mind to go and do something about it. So he did. He also decided that um, free market economies were the most evil thing on the planet, and he was going to do something about that. He was going to institute a financial system that meant that it was fair for everybody. <coughs> With fair in quotes. So he implemented one in Cuba. Please, go and do some reading about how well that went. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. So, Che Guevara was an intelligent man. Highly intelligent man. Just in case you think that all communism was implemented by idiots and you can do it better, no. No, you can't.
Anyhow, we should move on. We'll just clip this segment and post it as a separate video. <laughs> Fourteen disclaimers. <laughs> I was fascinated by, you know, this idolization of Shea Guevara. It's like, what? What was it about this guy? What? What was it about? Turns out, he's an attractive man on a t-shirt, and that's about it. Yeah, and it took an artist to to get him there too. Mm-hmm. And Grant comments that this is our first trigger warning incident, so I'm not sure about that. I d doubt it's the first, but... <laughs> Maybe the first of this half hour. Yeah, possibly. We've been all kinds of phobic in the past. All kinds. <sighs> Is you it know, really a phobia if it's a justified fear of uh, what will happen? Yeah, I don't know. I no, don't it's know. not. By it's definition, not. phobias are irrational fears. There you go. So, it, having a fear of the implementation of communism on your life is not a phobia. <laughs> not if you've got half a brain. Uh, it, it is... I keep coming back to that theory that, that socialism is attractive to the young because then they get the same thing that everybody else gets without having to put the effort in to get it. Yep. And then when they get old, older later in life and they've spent their lives working towards something meaningful, they go in the other direction because they're damned if they weren't going to let somebody take it off them. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens when you implement a, a properly socialist system, properly in quotes, a whole bunch of people lose a whole bunch of stuff, and maybe you can justify that, maybe you can't, but generally what happens is that a lot of people lose their lives at the same time as they lose their livelihoods, and that isn't mm. justifiable, no matter how evil you think they may be. Well, those those collectives in, in Russia when the Soviets took power. They murdered the collective owners and gave the collectives over to everybody that was working the collectives, going, well, hey, freedom to the people. The problem was is that the people that were working the collectives didn't know how to run the collectives. They just murdered the people that knew how to run the collectives, and so they collapsed. Yep. And then nobody had anything. So communism... In general, and I'm generalising, but communism in general is a race to the bottom. As is fascism. So, just in case anybody thinks that, hey, Dan is far right, oh, absolutely not. The far right is every bit as bad as the far left. We need to be in the middle, people. In that, mm -hmm. in that difficult dirty, nasty, complicated compromise Compromise that is the middle, that's where we need to be because that's the only way things happen that benefit people. If you want to simplify it, if you want to go to the ends of the political spectrum, you're going to hurt people. It's pretty simple. Unless you're the one doing the hurting. Well. And then your time will eventually come. Yep. That always happens. When the pendulum swings and then, yeah. Yep. Big Joe Steele got his. Come up and whatever. See, animal farms a precautionary tale too, but nobody gets it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Um, going back a long time ago now, I guess. Mm. The start of the year is a relatively long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's an age. Go on. 
So, still at, at the Salvos. Oh, yeah. Young girl comes in, I guess 15 or 16 years old. Mm. Um, rifles through the book section, comes out with a copy of uh, 1984. Mm-hmm. I happen to see her at the um, the checkout book Custer Park. I said to her, oh, this is interesting reading material for someone of your age. Mm-hmm. What's, what's it made of? Oh, it's for school. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I hope you just realize that it's not an instruction manual. Mm-hmm. It's a precautionary tale. And she looked at me very, very strange. <laughs> Precautionary tales. Well, that was a very lively little section. Well, we won't solve the world's problems, but we can, you know, point them out. (laughs) That's the complaint of all of my managers for the last decade. You keep pointing out problems, but you don't have the answers. No, I don't have the answers. We need to experiment to find them. Oh, no, we can't do that. Well, look where that got you. Mm -hmm. And Grant comments, welcome to software engineering. (laughs) All manner of kinds of engineering, really. (laughs) Grant's favourite quote is, today I said to him, hard, isn't it? (laughs) Because it ain't easy. You get the young guys come in going, I can write code. Yes, yes, you can. Can you put together software systems? What does that mean exactly? Had Had a funny send off from one of the juniors in the team. Um, and this is a guy I'd given a hard time on a number of different occasions because he had quote, the answers, unquote. (laughs) (laughs) Funny already. And and I had to quite, quite forcefully on occasions point out that he didn't have the answers and that that his, (laughs) quote, solutions, unquote, were worse than the problem. And, you know, detail at great length why. And he finally understood that, yes, I was old. Yes, I'd been around the block a few times. Yes, I did actually know what I was talking about. And I was operating at a level that was about four or five time periods ahead of where he was, and that he was actually struggling to keep up, rather than as what he thought was leaving me behind. Ah, to be young again. Still, never mind. He did leave some some very complimentary stuff saying that I'd proved him wrong on many occasions. Oh, yes, I did. (laughs) Can't be all bad, though. No. 
well, it's not like he was wrong all the time either. There were periods where he was actually correct and, you know, he was doing the right things and he was learning, well, as far as I can tell, he was learning the right way because he was making mistakes. But this is the point. The point is, is that you need to provide guys with an environment where they, they are free to make mistakes without serious consequence. And the problem with that particular environment is, is that it wasn't. Was, was operating under uh, 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 an umbrella of fear the entire time because if you made mistakes it cost delays and well let's not talk about the difference between scheduling delay and effect delay Yes, Grant, the Dunning-Kruger effect is a uh-huh. often subject of conversation in this is. particular stream. It absolutely is. Not nearly enough as it applies to my painting, but yeah. Oh! <laughs> I got to dig it myself. If we're digging at other things, I got to dig it myself too, just to balance the ledges. That's right. It's that 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 whole <clears throat> recognizing yourself as not necessarily any moral authority any on anything, but having an opinion about it. You know, it's like we're we're not evangelizing. At least I'm not evangelizing. There isn't a one single solution that's the whole thing about politics right there's 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 not if it was a solved problem we'd all know it by now (laughs) solved problem is not a problem yeah but there isn't one answer because if there was one answer we'd have come up with it by now it's dirty and it's messy and it's complicated and it will always remain dirty, messy and complicated. Settled science. Ugh. Uh, is that a branch of Scientology? Well, for the uh, religious fervor that people cling to settled science with, it may as well be. Mm. It's equally fictional. That's right. Now we're in trouble. Mm. I wonder (laughs) if we get a Twitch ban. I think we'd have to get Twitch viewers first. Oh, <laughs> there's that there's that, there's that cold water dose of reality. <laughs> I laughed so hard I blacked out. <laughs> oh, you can't use that word. Splash, <laughs> or something else like moist. <laughs> Not allowed to use that word in Joe's presence. <laughs> that is her absolute yeah. least favourite word. As it is for a lot of women, for some reason, mm. and I don't really get. Well, I can intellectually understand why I don't get it emotionally. It's like it's like spiders. Yeah. Well, speaking of spiders, it's um, 10 o'clock, 50, mm, mm. nearly 57 minutes past the hour. Right. Three to the top of the hour. There you go. You've got that negative maths going on. I've had a second cup of coffee. Wow. Who knew that not... mathematics was a caffeine powered pursuit? I think I figured that one out in high school. <laughs> Either that or the caffeine has crippled my ability to do mathematics without it. It's a dependent drug. Yep. So...
So we've got effectively three colours on these. Effectively. And the tree dude is mostly done. The tree dude. Well, you know. Needs some basing, but yeah. A little bit. He has a face in both sides. So he's got two eyes and a mouth here. And he's got yeah. two, two bigger eyes and a mouth here. So That's kind of creepy. It is. I did not notice that until you called it out. Mm. So I'm glad I didn't do him weirwood style. I think he's more effective as a brown tree. Mm. I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to do the eggs in the nest at the top of Dug Egg Blue or just leave them white. Brown and speckled. Brown and speckled. Oh, those are chicken eggs. Um, I mean, they look good as it is, but Robin's egg blue would stand out and be something a little bit different, wouldn't it? Mm, it would. And I have a few blues here that may be appropriate. I quite like that Vallejo steel grey as a sort of Robin's egg blue. Mm. I don't know if I just got a dodgy one, but it's... Um, it's the blue that I've used on all my barbarians. Steel grey. I'm like, okay. Well, it's funny. It's very blue. Steel grey is a bluey colour. I don't know that I've got it. But... Well, I'm sure you've got something equivalent. Possibly. Right. So that's Saint Sicilus skin painted. Why the hell did it have to take 48 hours to truck up my paints from Sydney? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think they're taking liberties. Again. Yes, I think they're taking liberties. I, I think under all of that stress and load under COVID, they figured out that people would put up with the fact that it's now taking a day longer. Hmm. It's very annoying. So, oh, that's neutral, great. Right? I could have gone into that store in town and picked it up myself. It's an interesting colour name. It's called Filthy Cape. Yes, that's an army painter colour. It is. It's I say before it shows up on the screen. Hardened carapace. It was one of the ones I was considering for my um, Ozcam knockoff analogue, but I didn't go with it. That's basalt grey. I don't think I've got steel grey. There you go. What's that colour? Onyx skin. Okay. Hmm. No. Well, it's been very entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that clue. <laughs> and to you also, Dan. Thanks, Matty. I uh, hope the rest of your weekend is restful and pleasant. not sure about restful, but um, pleasant. We'll give a trifle. Yeah. And thanks, Grant, for joining in in the chat. Yeah. Later, Gator. Don't be a hater. Right. It's a new one to me. <laughs> See you later, alligator. In a wild crocodile, yes, but not that one. <laughs> Definitely not. All right, folks. Uh, I'll give us your dad week. joke before you run away. Yeah, go on.
Why did Han Solo hate his steak? Because it was chewy. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> well, that's one to go out on. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> we might not return after that. <laughs> uh, see you next week, folks.